Hi there, I'm Rudolf. I'm an expat living in Finland and today's topic is about modeling in Finland. Um, I did a video last week where I was talking about um, kind of the lead up to doing a modeling assignment and now today's discussion I just want to talk about what actually happens on a shoot. I'm not a professional model but I do occasional um, modeling shoots and uh, commercials uh, in and around Finland and the Baltics. So I'm just going through my experiences in case anyone is interested in it and or if you have something, um, if you've got an assignment coming up and you've never done it before to give you some background so you have an idea of what to expect. If you haven't seen my last video, I'll put a link down below and you can kind of watch that. But uh, I'm just going to jump in and kind of explain what happened on this particular um, shoot. So as I mentioned in my last video, I can't give any details about the, um, the client or the campaign um, because of confidentiality reasons. Um, but I still think you can get uh, a lot of good information about uh, how these things work. In the case of uh, this ad campaign that I was doing, it's a two-day shoot. I live in Salo, which is an hour and a half from Helsinki, and the shoot was going to take place in Helsinki. So I got up early in the morning um, and took a train to Helsinki, and I wasn't feeling so well on the train, so when I got into the main station, I actually stopped for breakfast. Normally I wouldn't do that because when you're on the shoot they actually have a lot of food available so you don't you never have to worry about food you definitely won't get hungry but I wasn't feeling well and I was just worried that you know maybe I might pass out I'm diabetic so I have to kind of watch my sugar levels and make sure that um, they don't go too low so anyway I stopped for food and then I um, went off to the um, to the studio I'd never been to this studio before and so I was relying on Google Maps to get me there and when I got off the metro station, it was about a 20 minute walk from the metro to the actual studio. And the streets and the directions were quite confusing. And so I ended up getting lost and ended up getting there 15 minutes late. As I was at the point where I realized I was definitely going to be late, I thought about calling the um, producer to let them know that I was running late. But at a shoot, you can easily have like... 50 people milling about and so part of me was like well I don't want to you know raise attention to the fact that I'm running late uh, and also normally when you get there you're not like being whisked in straight away you're normally kind of sitting around so I thought let me just wait and I'll just kind of go and hopefully sneak in when I got to the studio, it's a working studio and they have um, three different, let's say, sound stages. So they had other things going on. One was a game show and I don't remember what the other one was, but there were three different programs going at the same time. So you kind of have to work out where yours is. So anyway, when I, um, when I turned up at sort of like the front desk, I'll call it, they called someone who came to get me. And when you are um, filming or doing a photo shoot, there's usually someone there that's kind of responsible for the, the talent. And um, usually that's the person that will tell you, uh, you know, will direct you, oh, here's hair and makeup, um, here's wardrobe, this is where you're going to do the shoot, and just kind of, oh, here's how the food works. So there's someone that kind of like explains the lay of the land to you. So... Um, I saw that person, she kind of brought me in and, um, you know, was kind of like, okay, this is where, this is where you need to go. So I went in and for this shoot, um, I always, uh, I always have trouble with um, pants when I'm doing a fitting. And so when I walked in, I immediately looked at the pants and I was like, that's not going to fit me. And I had already brought my own wardrobe, actually, um, because I thought just in case I wanted to make sure I had stuff I could wear. And so the, um, the stylist who has done the shopping and is responsible for dressing everyone said, oh, that's OK. And she went and got another pair. And I'm like, it's not going to fit me. She gave me another pair of pants. They fit perfectly. This is the first time I've ever actually worn clothes provided or worn pants provided by the um, by the production company. So I was like, wow. And then we slapped on the rest of my clothes and 
I was dressed in 15 minutes and usually it takes like an hour to get my wardrobe together. So that was pretty impressive. So once that was done, um, you know, in this particular um, commercial, there's sort of like, I'll say nine main characters. And then there's sort of, there are three others that um, are involved in the commercial, but we never filmed with them. Um, so the nine of us were kind of together the whole time. Um, once, once we were, once we were ready, um, we then went down and shot our scenes. Uh, my call time, meaning I had to be there at 9.30 and I was scheduled to, uh, work until 4.30 and then, you know, head off to my hotel. That was the plan. But things went so smoothly that, um, we broke maybe at probably around 12 for lunch. Um, we had lunch and then after lunch, they, the director came and was said, actually, you're done. You can go home. So I, I was shocked. Uh, I was checking into my hotel by 1 p.m. I, I couldn't believe it. And that was amazing because the night before, I think I had had like maybe three hours sleep because um, I had to get up so early to get the train in to Helsinki. And I was up late the night before trying to, trying on like 50 different outfits, trying to decide what I was gonna take for, um, for the shoot. So anyway, so um, that was pretty, pretty nice being done so early. The hotel was ready. Normally, um, if you're doing, like if, if, if you're being flown somewhere um, or like, for us in Finland, you know, we might go to um, Tallinn to do a shoot. Um, you know, the production company will pay for your hotel, they'll pay for your flights. But typically within country, um, you know, they wouldn't like for me, they don't pay my, my train fare or my bus to Helsinki. I have to cover that um, as on my own. But I did ask them to pay for the hotel um, and they did. So anyway but they don't pay for food. So like, you know, when I'm, when I'm in Helsinki and I, w I went out that night for dinner, you know, that's on me. I mentioned, um, before that I had breakfast in the, um, sta in the train station when I arrived again, that's on me. Um, but there's enough food there that actually, if I wanted to like stuff my face, so I never had to eat when I got home or anything, that's definitely possible because there is that amount of food lying around. Essentially, that's kind of how day one went. We kind of got together, did our shoot. It went pretty well. I was in, we probably did, I'm trying to think. It was all pretty much like one, let's say big scene, but they shoot it from different angles. So you actually might repeat the scene um, three, four different times. I think for me, we probably did three different takes of the scene from different angles. And then they did a few more takes of the scene, but they were close up shots where I wouldn't have been in the, in the camera angle. I'd be outside of the camera angle. So for those shots, you know, I was on break, just kind of hanging out with other people who weren't um, in those shots. But in theory, you know, for the scene they were shooting, I would have been sitting there as well. So that was great day one. Um, actually, one of the uh, cast members gave me a ride to my hotel, which was really nice. And always, every time I've done anything, um, I've done like photo shoots where I'm by myself. So there, you know, you might have the person who is um, being photographed before you and the person that's being photographed after you, but you're kind of like independent. Like in those times I've done that, I've just been, you know, I might have a quick word with the one before me, the quick word with the one behind me, but you're kind of, um, you know, on your own thing. But when you're doing a commercial and you're interacting with multiple people, you know, you're there hours, you know, you could be on set for, you know, eight hours, 10 hours. And so you, you will kind of, you know, you're sitting around doing nothing. So you kind of start chit chatting with the people uh, around you. And I've actually never had a bad um, interaction. Everyone that I've ever kind of met, dealt with, have always been really cool, interesting. Um, you know, we might kind of explain, you know, discuss, oh, how did you get this role? You know, 
which agency is representing you and, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's always kind of a, a good situation. As I said, you know, one of the guys actually drove me and someone else um, home. And that was great because, you know, we didn't know each other. We'd never met before that day. So that's kind of kind of nice. On the second day of the shoot, we had a bit of a late start. Uh, my call time was two o'clock, so um, I could sleep in. I actually asked for a late checkout from the hotel and then headed to the studio for the shoot. On the second day, we had kind of the, the nine of us that I said is kind of in everything, but then we were also filming a group scene. So they brought in like 30 extras to kind of fill out the crowds. And um, so that was fine. We kind of had like, they kind of had two sections. The extras kind of came in and were in one area. And then the nine of us were sort of in a separate area, kind of in the, um, the hair, makeup and dressing area. That's kind of where we were, we were kind of hanging out there um, because there wasn't really anywhere else. But there, there are still like some chairs and a few couches and stuff like that where we could kind of hang out. So that's, that's what we did. And again, similar to the first day, um, we filmed our scenes and again, there were different angles. So we did the, I'm trying to say, we did, we did two different scenes, but um, each time from two different angles. So I think we probably filmed like four times. And oh, in terms of how the filming works, we, the director will explain what he wants you to do. So it could be, okay, um, person A and person B, you're gonna walk down the street, holding hands, and then look into each other's eyes. So we'll practice that maybe three or four times, just, bef you know, just without filming it, just to see how it works. And then once the director's happy with it, then we will start filming it. And, you know, we could film it five times, 10 times um, until they're quite happy with it. And while you're actually filming, you also have not just the director and the production people, the camera, the lights, that sort of thing. You also have the um, advertising agency who developed the campaign. And then um, also you may have the client there as well, which could be, you know, whatever company hired the advertising agency. And while they're filming, they have sort of these monitors that are like the size of a, like a laptop screen, maybe like, um, like a 14, 14 inch, maybe, maybe, maybe only like a 12 inch, like a big, like the size of like a big, iPad or something like that. So they have these monitors and once they, after each round of filming, they will replay it and the director will be looking at the monitor to see how it's come out. And then also like the, the ad agency and the client, they will be sitting not where all the action is, they'll be sitting off to the side somewhere, sometimes even in a different room. And they are also watching, they're looking at the replay of the, um, of that last take. And then they'll decide, you know, if they like it or they want to do it again, they want to change something. So even when you get a script and it tells you, oh, you're going to walk hand in hand, whatever, you know, maybe after looking at it on the monitor, the director might come back or even the client might come back and they'll say, okay, don't hold hands. Um, you know, just walk next to each other or walk faster, walk slower, or run, um, you know, look at the stars, whatever, you know, the scene changes all the time. So even though you're doing it like, you know, you might do it 10 times, you're not doing the very same scene 10 times. It's usually, you know, slight changes to it. Um, let's see what else. And then in this case, we, so after, after we did all of this, um, the extras left and we had lunch. Um, they had, as I mentioned before, there's always snacks and stuff like that. So, you know, the extras, you know, they could help themselves to any snack, but they didn't have the like sit down, hot meal, catered lunch that, you know, the rest of us had. And actually, I was thinking, huh, I wonder how, you, I'm wondering who did the extras. So, I, so I'm thinking I quite had a good time doing this and I've always had a good time when I'm doing these. So I'm going to look and see if I can figure out, you know, what agencies books extras, because maybe I would consider traveling in to do one because like in this case, you know, they were probably there maybe two hours, three hours. 
So that might be something I'd be willing to do. Um, given the situation, I don't know how they get paid or whatever, but I'm going to look into that. So that's something you might want to do, try to see if you could um, get a role as an extra, even if you're not you know, in the main campaign. So after lunch, we, uh, we were actually changing locations, uh, which is not, also not unusual. Um, so, you know, for the first day and a half, let's say, you know, we filmed in a studio and then we had some outdoor filming. And I've done it before where, you know, I've, I'm filming in an apartment building or I'm filming in an office building or wherever. So it's not, you know, it's not strange that you might change location. When you're changing locations, the, um, the crew will arrange your transportation. Um, as I mentioned before, like my travel to Helsinki and my meals when I'm not there or around Helsinki, those are all on my own expense, but you know, if you're changing locations, once you're kind of there, let's say they're responsible to feed you, to move you around, and then at the end of the day, it's kind of up to you to get yourself home, however you're gonna do that. So we changed locations, and though because once we get to the new location, they need to set the scene, and that takes uh, a few hours. So when we got there, we were just kind of like hanging around um, the, the crew, there were some minors, their parents were there, but it was a really, really nice atmosphere. Everyone got on really well and there was a nearby park. So we just kind of hung out in the park. Uh, maybe I'll show a few scenes of where we were hanging out in the park and, um, just did that until it was time and they were ready for us. They came and got us and then we went and we filmed the, um, final couple scenes. Um, I, well, it was kind of like one scene, but from different angles. So, you know, we film with the camera behind us, we film with the camera in front of us. Um, and then there were some close-up shots, which I wasn't needed for. And so for those shots, you know, I could go and, you know, some of the other um, cast members were required to stay longer. Um, because we started late, we obviously were going to finish late and I had to get back. So we were supposed to finish the filming at 10.15 and the last bus back to Salo, where I live, was at 11.10. And um, they came to me about 10.10 and they said, oh, what time is the last bus? And I said 11.10 and they're like, okay, yeah, you should still make it. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to cause a, an issue. And I said, don't worry about it because, you know, if I miss the 1110, there's a 110 bus. The buses run every two hours um, throughout the night. So no matter what time we finish, I can get home. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. And, you know, to be fair to them, they were like, no, 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 we'll get you, we'll get you there. Um, and I was like, okay, but, you know, don't, don't worry about it. I can get home. Um, we finished shooting at about 1045, I would say. And at that point, they, they then said to me, oh, um, you know, we're going to call you a taxi. It will take you to the bus station and you should be able to catch your bus. And I was a bit surprised. I'm like, oh, OK, I thought I was going to have to get my own way home, but that's great. So um, they called like an Uber. Or I don't know. They use some app. And uh, I got to the I was at the bus station by 11 o'clock. I got on my 11.10 bus and, you know, I was home and asleep by 2 a.m. So it was a long day, but it was a really good experience. Everyone was really nice. And um, that's pretty typical. You know, I, I find that the directors are always really, really nice. I'm really surprised. I, you know, I always have this image that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, they're tough, they're yelling at you, get it right, you know, one more time, you know, we're all here, you know, why can't you do it properly or whatever, but never, they're always super, super nice. And I think, you know, they, they go out of their way to kind of make you comfortable and make it as easy and fun and funny and, and, and enjoyable as possible. So um, if anyone's thinking about um, doing modeling or doing commercials. Um, I highly recommend it. I'm now actually going to uh, make a point of, you know, checking some other places where I could submit my photos and maybe see if I can get more work because, um, you know, it's, 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 it's decent pay for a day or two of work 
And if you have to go abroad, then, you know, there's more travel days and stuff like that. But, you know, like for someone like me um, who doesn't have a, a job, um, it's, a great, um, it's, a, it's a great way to make some extra income and um, meet new people and have some different experiences. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you have any questions, um, drop a note down below in the comments and I will do my best to answer. And thanks for watching this week's video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.